Linfield students complete impactful internships. Many of them are possible because of the partnerships that support our students. Welcome to the Linfield University Summer Internship Showcase. I am Christy McKay from the Office for Career Development. Tonight we'll hear from interns who earned a stipend for completing their internship experience and some who completed paid internships. We have a number of guests with us tonight. First, our incredible students. They put a lot of time and energy into their internships and their presentations this evening. We welcome and want to acknowledge our generous partners from First Federal. I know they will be joining us. Um, the intern supervisors and coworkers from the internship sites. We have some Linfield faculty and staff with us tonight as well. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Tonight, we get to experience the comprehensive highlights from summer internships of 10 students across multiple academic disciplines supported by excuse me, diverse resources. Looking at this group of students, funding of over $25,000 came from the McMinnville Community Engagement Internship sponsored by First Federal, the Presidential Impact Internship Program supported by the Glenn L. and Helen Jackson Endowment, the Rose E. Tucker Charitable Trust, and the Career Development Impact Fund. The intention of these funds is to support students in an internship experience they may not otherwise be able to complete. <clears throat> we are excited these students will share with you tonight the outcomes of these experiences. I want to talk a little bit more about the McMinnville Community Engagement Internship Program. It is an award-winning partnership between First Federal and Linfield University that started 12 years ago. This year, the five students in this program completed over a thousand hours during their local internships. And we really wanna thank First Federal for their continuing financial commitment in support of Linfield students and Yamhill County nonprofits. This summer, okay. some experiences, hmm? this summer, some experiences still looked different than the traditional internship. Many were in person, but done from behind a mask. Some were hybrid with remote and in-person work. Our Linfield interns handled this new normal way to work with professionalism and grace. We are proud to share in their successes tonight. These interns also each participated in professional development sessions throughout the summer with the goal of inspiring students to embrace a comprehensive approach to their internship. We encourage them to recognize and appreciate their professional development, career exploration, workplace experience, academic relevance, vocational meaning, cultural understanding, and community engagement of experiential education. Through assignments and individual work, students developed professional goals, a mission for their life and career, an elevator pitch, and completed several informational interviews. Now we get to see the students' summaries of their internship experiences. Each intern had three to five minutes to share in their pre-recorded videos. I hope you enjoy hearing about their experiences. Hi, my name is Lana Wong and I'm currently a junior accounting major. This summer I interned at the United States Tennis Association, also known as the USTA. I chose the USTA since tennis provided me a lot of opportunities and it's actually one big reason of why I attended Linfield. The USTA is a not-for-profit organization with the mission of promoting, growing, and developing the game of tennis. In fact, it's the largest tennis organization in the world. I had responsibilities on court as I was assistant coach at Summer Fun Tennis Clinics. 
For Encore responsibilities, I help post permits and compute rosters via Jimboola's site and Excel. I also organize participant data and the web-based web registration system, which gave me more insight into business, specifically e-commerce. Learning how to talk and work with different people was one big aspect of how I became more professional. With the USDA, I worked with coaches of different ages. One was the same age as me as he was a college student. Another was the middle age, and the last was an elderly coach. With each coach, I had to adapt with how I talked to each of them, so we'd work well as a coaching team. Then I would also have to make sure that I adapt my language and tone to when I coach the children, trying to make things as engaging as I could and making instructions as clear as I can. One of my personal accomplishments that I'm most proud of is how I improved my communication this summer. I personally have a hard time talking with people, but this exposure and experience will be useful in the big picture in whatever type of work I end up in. My Winfield education encourages me to ask questions. This transferred to how I worked with my advisor this summer as I was comfortable with asking her questions about when she would explain things on what I would need to do for the Jambula site. I also feel that this education made me better at asking more specific clarifying questions. In school, I usually use physical planners to log down assignments and tasks, but this summer I realized how important it was to have an online calendar. Since we use Google, like such as Gmail to communicate, Google Meets for video calls, I got more comfortable with using Google Calendar. I also got more comfortable with understanding the basic functions of Excel when I was working with rosters, which would be applicable since I'm an accounting major. This internship made me realize that I enjoy both working in the office, but also having a good balance with being active and outdoors. This realization made me learn that I'd be open to working in a job such as with the government, but also maybe doing a part-time um, job or like even volunteering with the tennis industry, whether it may be through coaching, volunteering at tournaments, et cetera. This seminar is one reason why I feel like I've grew, grown so much from this internship this summer. It made me more aware of the importance of goal setting, so I knew what I wanted to get out of the internship. Another thing that the, the seminar supported me with was making sure I understood the importance of the last 20%, meaning that the importance of taking photos, saving files, and even writing thank yous, and making sure that I reflected what I learned from this internship. Last but not least, I would like to thank Maddie for letting me intern at the USTA this summer and educating me on what happens both on court and off court. Thank you also to the Impact Internship Program and for the Glenn Allen Helen Jackson Internship Endowment Fund for giving me the financial ability to intern at this nonprofit this summer. And last but not least, thank you for this program and career development for hosting the internship seminars this summer and aiding with my professionalism. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Shailene Grover, and over the summer, I had the exceptional opportunity of interning with Target as an executive team lead. A little bit about me, I'm a senior now at Linfield, and I'm a business management major. I absolutely love people. I've always loved working alongside of them and being kind of, I guess, in leadership opportunities, which ended up leading me down the road of human resources, which I've discovered I have a huge passion for. And actually, once I graduate, I will be continuing this target opportunity and being a ETL of HR in one of the Oregon and Washington district stores, which is super exciting. But on campus, I've been super involved since my freshman year, mostly in residence life, but I've also picked up a few work studies here along the way. At Target, our focus is really our guests. However, we are a super employee focused company as well. And we are guest driven, as is our little slogan of helping families discover the joy of everyday life. So as much as our, we're huge on customer service, Target has also really been developing the employees themselves. As a part of this internship, I got lots of opportunities to wear red. Luckily, it's one of my favorite colors, so I ended up getting probably seven different shirts that I'm glad that I'll still be able to utilize once I graduate. But besides just having to wear red every day so that the guests can really find us and identify the employees, I had a lot of various tasks. 
A lot of this is because the internship is a rotational program. So I got to work in all the different work centers, like style, general merchandising, um, and even in the back, like getting up at 2 a.m. to get to work to unload the truck so that we can really see what our employees go through so that I can help them to the best of my ability. We also have, again, a strong focus on team development, and that's learning and developing our employees. That's offering them a ton of different opportunities and software to help them succeed. It's boosting their morale and being able to keep open communication with them. So a lot of these skills I got to learn along the way, which was really incredible. And I got to team up alongside the different team leads and executive team leads to find what works for them and maybe things that can be approved on along the way. So I'm super excited to say that this was an exceptional <laughs> opportunity. And I realize I used that word, but it's because I truly mean it. I'm so sad to have to actually like leave this internship, but I'm really excited to continue it. I'll be able to in the spring term once my fall kind of settles down. So I'm excited to come back, but I'm also really excited to be able to apply the knowledge and the skills and the stories that I got to experience over the summer into my classroom. I wanna give a huge thank you to both Michael and Christy in career development. Huge shout out to Andrew, our story director, Jessica, our HR of ETL, as well as my mentor, Victoria, my recruiter, and all of the Target family in the Hillsborough Target 0362. Thank you so much, and thanks for listening. Hi, my name is Heidi Schmidt. I am a junior sociology major at Linfield, and I have been this summer and still am interning with the SNAP program here in um, um, so a little bit about SNAC, it's the Student Nutrition and Activities Clinic for Kids. Um, it was started because the number one community health concern it was um, obesity in children. Um, it's located at the Physicians Medical Center here in McMinnville, and um, we do a bunch of different things, but uh, the main is in office, we do individual um, lessons with uh, families on nutrition and exercise um, at just teaching healthy lifestyles and um, that kind of thing. So we also do um, group activities all year, um, working to promote health and give opportunities to our kids um, to get exercising and that kind of thing. That's what um, you can see on the screen. The games logo was our, is our summer program, Get Active in Nature this summer. It's one of the things I ran this summer. Um, and we take kids um, from pretty young, about I, the youngest I had was about six and the oldest I had was 18. So I chose to work with snack because um, nutrition and exercise is really important to me, both as a swimmer and an individual. Um, so assuming I know just the importance of healthy eating to stay fit and healthy, um, but also uh, being overweight and having diabetes, it runs in my family. So from a young age, I had experience with that. And just having this opportunity to help educate families on the importance of healthy uh, of a healthy lifestyle is incredibly, incredibly important to me because I want our community to be he healthy and happy for kids to grow up um, without all the health issues that the being overweight or underweight for that matter um, can lead to. Um, it's also as a sociology major um, helping to uh, educate them, you know, with the mental side and the social stigma around being overweight is um, really negative. Um, from my sociology uh, side, uh, it's interesting to work with um, often dis disadvantaged families, lower income families, and just being able to understand where they're coming from and being able to apply my uh, classroom education to the real world. It's really nice um, being able to have a chance to help level some of that playing field. Um, it's really good. My role at SNAC has been um, a little bit varied. So I work in the office as an intern with a couple others 
And we work individually with kids and families on our 10 lessons. And then outside the office, I ran the games program this summer, which is um, yeah, active in nature this summer again. And it's a reoccurring summer program to help kids get active. Um, we did uh, the run club and um, hikes uh, once a month at Miller Woods. We were somewhat limited by COVID, but um, that's why we only had two programs, but uh, we did what we could. I also did a lot of marketing, advertising on social media for that, which was totally new. Um, and just planning along with side my supervisor, Braylon Swan, and another intern. Um, some of the things I learned, I learned a lot, really, uh, communication skills, time management, organization, uh, but really major thing was um, marketing and advertisement skills on social media, which um, I had never done before. Um, and I, you can see an example of one of our social media posts, advertising run the club. Uh, I also got a lot better at discussing the program um, with kids from, you know, six years old to 18, very different. Um, also discussing the program at just random times because people want to know what snack, the snack program is or um, a warm handoff from one of our doctors um, where they, you know, bring in a family they want to join and we explain things. Um, also just uh, learning from my co-workers, um, asking for help with translating or advertising, or whatever it is. Um, it's definitely been really great. Um, I've also you know, learned a lot about myself and where I want to go with my career. I definitely want to work with a nonprofit, um, at least at some point. Um, also, I really want to be working against social inequalities and whether that's you know individually like I did here or like a public advocate or something like that. Um, I'm not real sure, but um, definitely want to go that direction. And I definitely know I don't want to be a um, graphic designer. I, uh, the, the putting together some of those ads was rather difficult. This is one of my earlier ones. Um, I got a little bit better, but not my thing. Um, so overall, I had just a wonderful time working with everyone and I helped so many kids um, get on to a healthy lifestyle and just um, providing some education. And that's been really wonderful. Just, you know, being able to help them is really great. Um, so I want to thank so many people. I'm sure I'm going to forget someone. But first off, my supervisor at SNAC, Braylon Swan. Um, she was just wonderful and helping me with so much stuff. Um, first federal for, um, you know, paying for the, uh, <laughs> paying me for this internship with the gains um, that allowed me to do it in the first place. Um, the, you know, Linfield, the career development, um, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, to my fellow interns at Snack and in class for just me out with marketing and that kind of thing, which I had no idea about. Um, my advisor, Sir Amy Orr, for just being an amazing professor and advisor um, and letting me talk to you and all that stuff. And to anyone else I forgot, I'm sure I forgot someone, but thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. For those of you who know me already, I apologize. But for those of you who don't, hi. My name is Ian Thompson. I'm a sophomore here at Linfield studying anthropology and history. And I'd like to take a brief little while to talk to you about my internship this summer at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum. Before I start though, I would like to thank everybody who made this internship possible for me. This includes First Federal for sponsoring my internship, as well as all the fantastic people at both Linfield and the museum who aided me in any capacity during the summer. Speaking of the museum, this is the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum here in McMinnville. Obviously, it's a museum. I don't think I need to go into much depth about what a museum is, but I would like you to know what a museum collections is. The collections, in short, is basically what houses all of the artifacts that are not on display currently. Contrary to popular belief, I am more than just this. I was actually hired to do something, so I worked in the collections as a collections intern. 
So what does it mean to be a collections intern? The goal of my internship specifically was to work with the textile artifacts in the collections. This includes uniforms and clothes related to the history of aviation or space. The bulk of my work here involved recording a comprehensive history of the condition of each artifact, as well as preserving them from any future damage. Recording the history involved taking photographs of the artifacts, updating their pages in the cataloging software that the museum uses, as well as handling them with the utmost care. Preserving them, on the other hand, for the most part involve putting protective coverings and identification tags on the textiles. I hesitate to use the word product, but here's an image right here of what the finished product looks like. I'm very proud of the amount of work I did. I don't believe that I sacrificed the quality of my work for my quantity. And on top of this, I learned a lot during this internship. As far as what I learned, one of the most important things was how to handle artifacts with care and safety. I believe that the last thing anybody would want would be an artifact to be broken or damaged, and I didn't, so I'm going to call that a win in my book. Uh, on top of this, I also learned how to use the cataloging software that the museum uses, which is a pretty transferable skill, as lots of museums around the world and country use the same software, including Linfield's museum. How do my studies at Linfield relate to my internship? As I stated before, I study anthropology and history, and I don't think anything gets closer to those fields than actually working with tangible pieces of history that relate to people. On the flip side of things, my internship actually helps me at Linfield at the very moment. I work in the Linfield Anthropology Museum, and I've gained a lot of perspective from a larger museum that I can apply to a smaller one the size of Linfield's. My internship will end up guiding me in the future, there's no doubt about that. But to be honest, I'm 20, I've got a lot of time to figure out what I'm doing with my life. As far as the museum goes, it was a fantastic experience for me. I think that my love for museums and how they work as an institution behind the scenes has multiplied tenfold. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going in life, but I would not be surprised if it had to do with something with museums. As I end up, I would like to say thank you to everybody again who aided me in any capacity. You know who you are. You're brilliant. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to come to this, and I'm really excited to tell you about my summer internship. So a little bit about me, my name is Sarah Mainwaring. I am currently a senior at Linfield University majoring in business management with a minor in wine studies. I am originally from Seattle, Washington. And when I first came to Linfield, I kind of jumped in feet first. I've had a lot of leadership positions on campus. I've had a lot of different work study jobs, but this summer was my first internship ever and I'm excited to tell you about it. So this summer I interned with the McMinnville Downtown Association at the Farmer's Market and our main goal this year was to attract more EBT customers to our market, which I will explain in the next slide. Uh, my role uh, in this internship was to handle our EBT exchange or food stamp exchange. So those with food stamp cards were able to come to the market and exchange their food stamp dollars for tokens, which could be used at the market, which is great because then low-income families and individuals can have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, along with the exchange, I did some data logging. So I would have my office hours where I would take our little card reader and upload some of the data. So how many transactions we would do per day, how the average dollar amount, just so we could keep track of that um, and use it for our records and to improve our marketing, which is my other part of my role. Uh, I did a lot of outreach and making posters and flyers and finding different places that I thought people with EBT exchange would see them and attract them to the market. What I have learned in my internship is I got to use some real world applications with Excel. So using that uh, as a tool in the office and seeing how real world situations can be handled and dealt with in Excel. I also got to strengthen my customer service skills. I fielded a lot of questions. Uh, we were also the information booth at the market, so learning how to answer those in a professional manner uh, and also how to respond if you don't know the answer. And then I also got to 
do some data research um, and kind of starting from scratch, I created my own uh, data gathering tool. I did a survey with our vendors. We were doing some reevaluation of our market hours. So I wanted to see what hours were most profitable. So I came up with a plan, made a template, distributed those, gathered them, put all the data in Excel and kind of analyzed that. So connecting all this back to Linfield, uh, the classes that helped set me up for success were my accounting classes. Uh, we did uh, work with accounts payable. So we would give vendors a receipt where they would write down how many token dollars that they had that day. And I would upload those receipts to accounts payable so we could cut all of our vendors a check at the end of the month for the proper amount. And then I also took a marketing class as part of the business core. And that really helped set me up for success. I knew how to analyze my target market, figure out their needs and wants, and how to best market to them. And then the things that I learned in my internship that I'm going to be bringing back to Linfield are real, real world applications of programs. So how do you success, excel in an environment um, and use it as a tool? And then also data gathering and analyzing as a manager, you want to make sure everything's running right. You want to see how you can better things and gathering that data can really help with that. So my internships impact on me. Uh, I learned a few things about where I see myself in the future and what I'm going to look for in a career. The first of which being people. I am such a big people person. I know that I want to work in a job where I'm interacting with people. Um, it really just gives me energy and I could definitely see myself being happy in a position like that. Also community, growing up in a big city, I never really experienced the small town community feel, but I love it. Everyone supports each other and I definitely want to work for a business that works with the community or has a positive impact on the community. And then lastly, like I said before, data analyzing, I really loved doing the market research and figuring out how to improve things. I want to be known for being helpful. So I will definitely look for that in a future career. Um, some benefits of our internship seminar. I really liked seeing how the different majors connected to their internships, uh, kind of seeing all the directions you could go with a history major or an art major. It really gave me hope seeing all the different directions that I could go with my major and what it could look like in a work setting. Um, we also did a lot of goal setting, which was really awesome, kind of manifesting our goals, writing them down. Uh, I really believe that if you don't write down your goals, you're never going to reach them. So that was a really great way to stay on track. And then informational interviews, those were great. Uh, you could peek under the hood of different professionals and see what their jobs were like, uh, kind of a crash course. And if you were going to uh, see yourself in a position like the person you're interviewing. Um, and I just want to give a quick shout out to my supervisors, Chloe and Dave. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I also wanted to thank First Federal for sponsoring my internship and the lovely people that put on our internship seminar. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Hello, my name is Tanner Coulter. I am a junior at Linfield University studying accounting and international relations. I serve as the treasurer of my fraternity, Delta Psi Delta, and I am involved in the political science department. Over this last summer, I interned for Remnant Initiatives, a 501c3 nonprofit with the mission to help previously incarcerated individuals, or as we call them, neighbors in transition, to reach sustainable self-sufficiency. In my intern role, I wore various hats. Our program director, Hattie Lindell, and I worked directly with NITs to connect with community-based services to reach self-sufficiency in eight success indicators. Child unification, housing, healthcare, income, sobriety, transportation, important documents, and pro-social community. This is an example of our database that we use to track this information in order to make sure that our NIT is on the right path for themselves and are following the roadmap that we provided. I also work with our executive director, Kim Perry, to run reports on NITs with relation to success indicator, activities, and parole officers. This is an example of our success indicator report. Uh, we send this information to the Department of 
community justice uh, to show them the success of remnant initiatives and the success of our NITs. I also am pleasured to have the task of website management, IT help, and collaborating with our communications director, Jody Hansen, on the monthly newsletter. Throughout this internship, I have learned flexibility, organization, and patience is key. One NIT who I've had to use these skills with is called RM. RM is diagnosed with schizophrenia and takes medication, which prevents him from passing drug tests, which prevents him from going to some of the housing that we work with. From the day he released in May to July when we found some temporary housing, he was tent camping on the side of the roads. With RM, we had to be very flexible of contacting him. There were times that he his phone was not charged. There was times that he couldn't hear it ring because of the cars passing by. And then we also had to be flexible with where we met him because there wasn't a, his own place. So we met a lot of the time in Sherry's or out walking or he came to the office. With his situation as well with housing because there were so many options and making sure, okay, does his medication work with this place? Does it not? We had to be very organized and patient with the process. Uh, there was a lot of communication between me and Heidi, uh, RM's PO, uh, different you know community organizations that worked with housing. My summer internship isn't over yet. I am still currently working with Remnant Initiatives to connect with the community to show what we do and how we better the community. I would like to thank Jody Hansen, Heidi Lindell, Kim Perry, Caitlin Henyon, and our board of directors for the work they do and for su the support they provide. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Jing Muang, and I will be presenting Sir Optimus internship that I completed this summer. A little bit about me is that I am a marketing major who's a senior this year. Seroptimus is a global volunteer organization that improves the life of women and girls through program leading to social and economic empowerment. It was chartered on October 17, 2009, and it's a club within Northwestern region. The internship that I did is located in Newport, Oregon, and their main mission is to give scholarships and also donate for young girls who are still in high school who are unable to support themselves enough financially to further their education. This internship, I did it mostly through remote and attending weekly meeting every Thursday through Zoom with other people who are part of the Seroptimist and also my advisors. However, I get to also volunteer in person for their Lavender Festival that happened in the summer for two days on July 10 to 11. My roles and responsibilities include managing their social media platform, which is mostly on Facebook, and also helping with researching strategies of a way to grow their organization base, such as the product that they sell online and also for their social media contents and brainstorming ideas and content for their website and also creating videos content for their Labyrinth Festival. And as you can see on the right, th those are some of the products that they sold during their Lavender Festival. All are handmade. One of them are gems and also handmade bags. What I learned from this experience is that organization communication is really important when you're working with other people, especially in a nonprofit organization, and also expanding my knowledge on creating website, as well as social media managing and content creating for organization. And in the right picture, it's me with one of my advisor who helped me during this Lavender Festival. And applying to this Linfield education is that it is related to my marketing course, which helped me with a way to come up with ideas for a way to grow their website as well as their products. And for 
electronic media. It also helped me with creating content for videos, editing, and also social media posting. And all this concept applied to me by you know, the knowledge that I gained from my marketing in electronic media, as well as hands-on experience from my internship as well. How I will bring this experience into my potential career is that I hope to work in a digital and social media marketing in the future and also all this content creating for brand and company that I did for the internship would also help me with my future social media content creating and utilizing research and creativity skill as well. And for your for career exploration, I enjoy working with other people and content creating is also pretty fun. And I hope to continue it in the future as well as how creativity and structure are very useful when it's come to marketing. And as for seminars, I learned a lot about elevator pitch, which I wasn't too comfortable doing it or too familiar with it before I was part of the seminars and also accountable for my tasks and responsibilities. And it helped me a lot with public speaking as well and sharing ideas with other people. And lastly, I would like to thank Bridget and Sally for warmly welcoming to this organization and also giving me this internship opportunity. And I also would like to thank Christy and Michael for helping me with the seminars and Linfield Career Development for this opportunity. Thank you. So, uh, my name is Dane Affleck, and this summer I interned at the Yamhill County Historical Society um, as part of my summer internship. A little bit about me, um, I'm from San Diego, California. Um, I'm a senior here at Linfield. Um, I'm a JAMS major, which is, a, which is the Journalism and Media Studies major. And I have interest in film, media production, audio design, multimedia content, basically just creating online content and creating an entire package. Um, and fresh out of college, I hope to work as some sort of media production assistant, either in radio, um, video, uh, very video production company, um, or in advertising. Um, I mean, really anything that would just kind of get my foot in the door and allow me to work on these kind of projects. So I work at the Yamhill National Historical Society, and it is a nonprofit organization. Its mission is to protect, preserve, and share the history of the heritage of Yamhill County. And the, the Yamhill Valley Heritage Center, which is where I mostly was, is just on the 18, um, just outside of town. And they also have a historic Lafayette site, um, which is obviously in Lafayette, but I did not visit there. I was mostly at the Heritage Center. And basically there's loads of artifacts from a variety of generations of farmers way back down the line. And they basically just donate um, tons of old farm equipment and automobiles, such as tractors and you know old Fords, um, super cool um, historic artifacts that don't necessarily have to do with farming, like big cha like chainsaws from um, you know from the lumber industry way back in the day and yeah just tons of cool stuff so my position was the media production assistant um, and basically I helped create promotional videos for the organization and I started off by taking close-ups of various artifacts and then um, shots of artifacts panned out. So basically I got to choose 10 different artifacts for the team to start. And I personally worked on five. So from these photos, a media production company um, basically filmed um, these artifacts. And the idea was that it would start super zoomed into the artifact and it would slowly pan out. And at, the idea was that 
at first the audience doesn't know what the artifact is um but the voiceover during the video would slowly describe the broad historical context of something without the art audience necessarily knowing what it was but as i zoomed out it would get more specific and then the audience would start to figure out what it is that they were looking at so I interviewed various YCHS volunteers to get more specific information on the artifacts. And then obviously the artifact would be revealed at the end. And this would potentially cause interest in these artifacts and to get more people out on the site and to um, visit these artifacts in person. So essentially what I've learned um, mostly for me personally, is um, just how to communicate and coordinate with my colleagues in terms of just um, setting up meetings, working on group projects, um, in this case, um, multimedia content, such as promotional videos. And I did utilize um, my, story, my storytelling skills from the jams major. So I, you know, used creative writing um, as part of the script in order to um, create interest in these various artifacts. And, you know, from practice of writing news stories and feature stories and all this stuff, I've definitely learned how to creatively write and for people to become intrigued. Um, and, you know, I just have learned the value of working together and um, with multiple people to create something pretty cool, like these promotional videos. And I mean, overall, I've just learned that I like to um, create this kind of stuff. And hopefully in the future, I'd like to contribute more to these kinds of project, these kinds of projects, because um, I mostly just did the writing behind it. I didn't necessarily do the filming or anything. So hopefully in the future, I'll be able to do more and contribute. And some acknowledgments, Pam Watts, the YCHA's president, which offered me this position and put it up in the first place. Um, Carrie Martins, was also, which also, um, she worked for YCHS and she was my main source of um, contact. We had multiple meetings and she kind of guided me through the process and let me know, um, you know, the steps to take and she proofreaded my, my scripts and all that good stuff and gave me good advice. And of course, Christy McKay, which is the, she uh, set up this whole thing, this whole internship process. And I'm really grateful for that, that I got to contribute and have this opportunity. So yeah, thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is Devin Thacker and this is Dovetail Workwear. My Dovetail summary, their mission is to encourage women to enter and succeed in non-traditional occupations. We envision the future as all women fulfilling their personal potential, thriving in their work and strengthening their communities. Uh, they're located in the, the East Bank of Southeast Portland. Uh, they're a great company to work for and their president is even an Olympic Field alum. The internship as a whole, um, it was eye-opening to see the design overview process, just to see how, what it takes or uh, how everything is done to put a piece of clothing into a store. Um, it's pretty amazing, but it was uh, eye-opening to work for, as I said. The production process, these meetings sometimes would last two hours, uh, were pretty draining and stressful, but it was cool uh, to see what all or who all is involved in just making one piece of clothing. Uh, customer service is one of my big projects. I worked with our review process. So anytime a customer would submit a review about a product they bought, um, I would read it over, uh, do a summary of that review. And every week we would go over um, the weekly reviews. And seasons, this one was pretty cool to learn about. Um, so right now they have their 2021 season but they planned that back in 2019. Um, and now they're working on designs for 2023. 
Uh, in my head, I thought that was pretty crazy how they could work so far ahead, but they actually design for functionality rather than trends. Projects, one of my big projects was um, to actually compare different functionality with different competitor brands. Uh, some brands included Patagonia, Duluth, uh, Dickies, and um, it was really cool to go through all these different brands and see what they were doing and if Dovetail was doing it better or if there was places we need to improve. Um, so I did just that, looked up those brands and wrote out a big spreadsheet on Excel. Um, and we had a big meeting with the whole entire team. Um, so these are actually some of the clothing or pants and overalls that we used for um, that competitor competitor analysis. Um, but what was learned? I learned a lot about communication. It's key. And teamwork. Um, we had a small team at Dovetail, so it, it was always good to have your best on and also positivity goes with that um patience a lot of stuff in the design industry takes time like i said it's about three years until you actually see anything go out into the real world um and also accepting failure not everything's going to work the first time i know dovetail just talking to the team they uh, mentioned that like their first year it's hard you have to know um, where to improve or what's going wrong, and you have to listen to your customers. What was used and what was gained? So I used a lot of my economics major, um, just different marketplaces, and when they would talk about them, uh, it was easy to understand. Past work experiences, I worked at Wilco and other places where dovetails actually carried. And artistic mindset, I have a studio art minor, um, this helped a lot with the overall design process of clothing and different items. Um, and also I have a farming background, so that helped them um, look at different audiences as well. But what I gained was I worked a lot with Excel um, and actually seeing a production process. Uh, this was cool, like I said, in those meetings. And then working with others, since it was a small team, I'll go back, uh, since it was a small team at Dovetail, um, I got to know them on a personal level. So I always think that that's great in a team to, to get to know the people around you. And also connections, just being a part of Dovetail and the people that they know and being um, in tune with who they're talking to and what they're talking about, um, really connecting me with some awesome people. So the future, uh, you saw a sneak peek of this, plot, of this slide, but Dovetail Workwear or... Grain Station Brew Works. That was also my second job during the summer. Um, Grain Station right down the road from Linfield. I was the assistant brewer and I going into the summer um, was like, do I want to do design or do I want to brew? And by the end of the summer, I had my decision and it is brewing. So Dovetail, as much as it has helped me understand the design process and that world, I just love brewing and that's what I would like to see in my future. Thank you all, and do you have any questions? And we're actually gonna wait until the end if, to see if anybody has any questions. Hi everyone, this is my presentation on my internship this past summer with Let's Talk Sports with Kanoa Leahy and Jordan Helley. I did this internship through the Presidential Impact Internship Program. A little bit more about me. My name is G. Kenna Tanoi, go by Kenna. Um, I'm majoring in sport management and economics and will be graduating after this semester. Uh, I'm a strong advocate for QT BIPOC representation, the importance of education-based action in all aspects of our society, and the intersectionality and power of sports as a unifier to bridge communal gaps. Within that, I am specifically interested in social responsibility, community outreach, and talent management within the sports industry. So a little bit more about the podcast that I helped out with. It's based in Honolulu and it was online slash remote for the entirety of the internship as they're both based on Oahu and Maui and I was here in Oregon this past summer. Um, this is Kanoa Leahy and Jordan Helley. They're both well-respected sportscasters back in the islands and come from a long lineage of sportscasters. Uh, Let's Talk Sports is the new podcast version of their popular radio show. 
and it talks about real issues both in and around the world of sports, both inside and outside the island coastlines. Okay, so specifically for me, my role, responsibilities, and accomplishments throughout this past summer, um, I was a podcast production assistant, and I reported to both of them for all of aspects of my work, feedback, questions, concerns, etc. Um, I helped to pitch guest ideas, specifically to help broaden their audience demographics to be more inclusive of women and non-male identifying individuals, um, as that's their main target audience, and it's also a product of a they're all, all of their guests being men. Um, one specific episode that I was able to help with was with Jenna Gabriel, who was actually my high school classmate, and she's the starting setter at the University of Texas, Long the Longhorns. And so that was a really cool episode because we were able to interview her and talk to her about uh, name, image, and likeness the week before it got enacted. Um, so it was really cool to hear her perspective as the collegiate athlete at the division one level and how that would directly impact her. Um, aside from that, I would listen in and take notes during any interview recording, um, notating things that caught my attention, tips to incorporate in other shows that I'm a part of and just overall absorb as much as I can. Um, something really cool actually that I'm working on right now that was a direct byproduct of working with Kanoa and Jordan is an article on USA Volleyball and Team USA um, through a media outlet called Amazing HQ, which highlights and amplifies Asian and Asian American athletes. Um, I'm currently finishing up interviews for it, but so far I've been able to interview Micah Christensen, Kavika and Eric Shoji, who are all current members of the Team USA men's volleyball team. Um, and on the women's side, we were able to interview Justine Wong Orantes and coach Jeff Liu. Um, so that's been really cool, um, just because Micah, Kavika, and Eric were direct contacts from Kanoa and Jordan, and I was also able to interview Jordan um, for this article as well. So it's it's a huge like interview piece, um, but it wouldn't have been possible without either one of them. So super excited for that to come out. Not completely sure when it'll come out, hopefully this end of this month or next month, but yeah. Um, from this, main takeaways and overarching lessons, um, time management. I had two other jobs this past summer and had to figure out a balance to accommodate all of it. Um, also had to learn how to not be, not be afraid to take risks just because I'm pretty hesitant at first, um, but this was probably the safest environment for me to make mistakes and ask any and every question. Um, so that was really, really helpful. Um, and just overall keeping up with current events. Sports is constantly updating and sometimes even with the episode recordings, things would change last minute or get added, um, literally just due to something being released in the news, maybe 10, 15 minutes before we were scheduled to record. Um, with my little education, interconnectivity and balance were two prominent themes just because, again, going back to me having two other part-time jobs over the past summer and with interconnectivity, just seeing the crossover with my liberal arts um, education through my economics classes, gender studies classes, and how that directly plays into sports. And then my experience and moving forward, specifically with sports media, like it was so dope to see Kanoa and Jordan um, through the through this podcast just because they're both the epitome of hustlers and like this is just something that they do on the side it's not even their like main job and so it helps to just like show like truly in action like you have control over your own destiny and those two are literally doing it um and they're both like sportscasters for high school sports collegiate sports all across the islands and so that was really really cool um and then networking especially in Hawaii everyone knows everyone hence my article that I was able to um, interview those three individuals. Um, and yeah, you're never going to know who you'll meet or cross paths with in the future. And then career exploration and direction. Um, I realized that I am a huge people person um, and I really want to be able to incorporate that and within sports, talent management and working with athletes and people that directly deal with athletes is something that I'm super passionate about. So that was really cool to figure out. Um, creativity wise, um, I realized that I need to 
have creative or hands-on aspects in whatever projects I work on just to keep me like engaged and motivated. Um, so that was really cool, especially with this being a podcast and having like tangible episodes to produce every week. And then the summer seminar, just hearing other students and them doing completely different things than I was, but still going through the same things that I was going through was really reassuring. Um, and just expanding my personal mission and seeing the crossover in other people's um, internships as well. And yeah, just wrapping it up quickly. Um, thank you to Kanoa and Jordan. Um, thank you actually to my internship past uh, last summer um, through the in impact internship program. I was able to connect with Kanoa and Jordan um, through Chris, Russ and Nat, my old supervisors at the Hawaii High School Athletic Association. So thank you, thank you. Um, thank you to my family. And lastly, thank you to the internship program. I'm not sure how many of you have actually been counting, but I said we had 10 presentations and number 10 is coming next. Hello, I'm Camille Lubach. I'm a third year studio art and Spanish double major here at Linfield University. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Christine, Michael, Sherry, and the Presidential Impact Program for one heck of a summer. Secondly, I am grateful for the generosity of the Rose Tucker Charitable Trust. The trust and career development made my stay in New Mexico possible. From June to August, I was a museum intern in Santa Fe at El Rancho de las Golondrinas, a living history museum. New Mexico became my dream destination largely because of its art scene and my love of the desert and the food. I was, delightful, I was delighted to score an interview at Las Colondrinas, a place that complemented my majors and whose grounds were spread out enough to alleviate COVID concerns. Las Colondrinas is a 200 acre property that welcomes locals and tourists and students to explore its historical adobe buildings. Most importantly, visitors get to actively participate in preserving the legacy of the land and Hispano traditions, the mission of the museum. For two months, I acted as historical interpreter alongside the volunteers in the weaving program. My Spanish language skills came in handy when giving tours and translating documents. In addition to interacting with volunteers and visitors, I assisted in researching and developing an education program called the Traveling Trunk. My job was to find and write about items that told part of Las Colondrinas' story. I shared my newfound knowledge with eager visitors and demonstrated weaving on a giant 200-year-old loom. Here she is. A typical day at the ranch consisted of my learning as a weaver, gardener, and program developer. Fortunately, my art education prepared me well for the complex art of textiles. I left Santa Fe with three woven pieces made with the help of longtime weavers Melinda and Wendy. These same women that patiently taught me how to weave pitched in to help me set up a booth at the wine festival. A last boost of confidence came to, from the monthly internship seminars with fellow Linfield interns. There I got, a, got to hear and share different internship experiences while adding helpful suggestions to my tool belt. Coincidentally, another student was completing a similar internship to my own. I spent one lovely afternoon chatting about museum studies and textiles with my peer, Ian Thompson. Our shared love for museums inspired me to seriously consider a career in a museum like Las Colondrinas. And the format of a living history museum was what allowed me to understand and experience Spanish life for myself. Soon, I will spend a year in Spain studying in Alicante and Sevilla. The rich Hispano history in New Mexico has provided me with a head start for my studies abroad. Las Colondrinas has encouraged me to seek a career that is hands-on and, if I am lucky, values creativity and bilingualism. Finally, I will stay in touch with the community at Las Colondrinas as they celebrate their 50th anniversary since opening. I already miss the New Mexico sunsets, but I continue to weave and make art informed by life in the Southwest. Thank you very much. Wow, I am just blown away by the depth of the experiences that these students have had. 
Um, as Camille mentioned, she is now in Spain. We have one of our interns who is now studying abroad in England. We have one who is not here tonight because she has a theater uh, production she is rehearsing for. Um, we have an intern with um, athletic practice. We have an intern who is working right now. So um, these students are involved. They are creating really great experiences for themselves. And um, I just wanna thank you all for coming tonight and for supporting these students. I want to give a special shout out to uh, First Federal. I see Kathy is here with us tonight and um, Linfield really appreciates the partnership that we have that allows these students to have these experiences. Um, so thank you very much, Kathy. And I know you'll pass that along to your colleagues. Um, all right. And see, Devin has to go. He's uh, running the Student Senate here. Um, and so I'm just going to wrap it up. And um, I will have all of these presentations up on the Career Development YouTube channel uh, for if you want to share them with others or view them again. Um, but I do thank each of you for coming, for sharing this hour, celebrating the work that our students have done. Have a good evening.